So today I am going to attempt uh, to replace some parts on my Spirit 210 uh, by Weber Grill. I love Weber. They, they are a great company. The grill is excellent and I love the way they stand by their products. Um, it started out because some of my burner tubes um, were really rusted. Specifically one of them had a hole in them. So I wanted to replace that. Uh, thankfully it was under warranty. And then I saw some other parts were a little rusty. You could see the bottom left front leg uh, is rusted out. Some parts were under warranty, some weren't. So I ordered a few parts, I will show them later. Um, and what started out as a simple burner tube replacement will turn out a little bit more complicated than I expected. Um, I had previously replaced a burner tube on a different grill for a friend of mine, so I was confident I can do that. Uh, but I haven't done the process that I will do today, so I will be learning as I record. So please bear with me. I am obviously not a professional. I am just um, a grill owner who is trying to preserve her grill and trying to extend the life of what is otherwise a wonderful grill. So I will show you first uh, the inside and then I will start assembling and I will stop as I go along. So you could see here, this is the back rack. It's very rusted. This is my fault because I had taken it out um, and left it on the side and then completely forgot about it. So it was exposed to the elements. So I purchased a new one from Weber. I don't always use this back warming grill uh, because this is a smaller grill. This is the 210. So it, it is a smaller size grill and sometimes I feel like the warming grill gets in my way. Sometimes I flip it while I'm cooking and it stays like that. But one day I, I don't know why I chose to remove it. I will not do that in the future. Um, this one has a back uh, hanging rack. That one's a little rusted. I may have to replace that as well. I don't always use it. Sometimes I just use this rack for the the buns that I put there or whatever items I feel like I don't want to get direct heat. And then uh, these are my old cast iron grates. I have to give them a good cleaning. Oh, I should get my gloves now. And then here's a peek at the inside of my grill. It is pretty yucky. I scraped a lot of the uh, residue that there was. I don't know if you could see, that's the hole on the burner that started this whole process. So I will be replacing these guys I think I got the replacement for this. Now that I think about it, I have to double check. I'm also replacing that pan that's holding all that residue. That's why I have not uh, even bothered to take it off of the bottom pan because I'm just gonna remove it as one um, and throw the whole thing away because that bottom grease pan is very rusted. So I, I ordered a new one. Um, okay, then let's check for that extra burner tube uh, because that is the problem one uh, before I start this whole process. Okay, I double checked. I do have um, that extra burner tube. I got that last week. My memory is obviously failing me here. Um, okay, so this is the main body. These are the burner tubes and that's the grease pan that I will be disposing of um, and replacing. As you can see, it is definitely very uh, rusted through um, and it was actually not holding in place that well because the little uh, 
channel, slide rail uh, was also rusted, so I'm replacing both of these. And I will um, show that later in the video. Another thing that is rusted out is this bottom shelf. I purchased a new one to replace that since I was also replacing this top bar as well. So again, this kind of snowballed into a bigger project than I expected it would be. I was just going to replace a burner tube. And as I was inspecting the grill, I saw some rotted areas. Um, this is proof positive to me that I should definitely keep my grill covered. Um, I was sloppy with that. There were times where we took the cover off and didn't replace it specifically for one winter and obviously that does damage to your grill. So if you invest money in this grill um, and you want it to last as long as it should, um, invest in a quality cover. I was going to go the cheaper route and order one not from Weber, but uh, Weber actually offered me a discounted price on the cover and I decided to go with them. It comes with, I think, a two to three year warranty. I have to double check when the cover actually comes. Uh, but to me, it's worth it. Also, I wanted to give them back a little bit, uh, specifically because they're such a great company. They really stand by their products. I love that about companies. I feel that if you make a product, you should definitely stand by it, and they do, and they do it so courteously. So. Um, definitely two thumbs up for Weber um, and from now on I will be ordering my parts directly from them just to give them a little bit of extra business um, they definitely deserve it so what I'll do now is I'm going to start assembling um, differently than I thought I thought at first I was going to disassemble all of this and then put it together with the new parts but then I decided that didn't quite make sense for me because I honestly don't know what I need to disassemble anyway. And I don't want to unnecessarily disassemble something that I do not need to. The last thing I want to do is work any harder on this project than I have to. So what I will do is um, I received this top part. I received the wheel frames because those were also uh, rotting out. So I will assemble that first separately and then see what I need to do to uh, attach it on to this, the, the parts that I'm actually keeping. So I'm gonna work a little backwards, but I, I think that that will save me some time. Okay, let's see how long this all takes me. So I wanted to show you the different parts, kind of somewhat put together uh, so that I can get a general idea of how they will go. Uh, what I just found out in doing so is that unfortunately Weber does not provide you with the replacement screws. So I'm a bit disappointed in that. I'm hoping that my original screws are A, not rusted um, and not difficult to take out. It also defeats my idea of pre-assembling this because I obviously I will have to disassemble this, the original grill in order to get those screws. So mm, a little disappointed. I didn't know that perhaps I would have ordered uh, had I known the specific screws. I'm not even sure if they do provide them. I'm sure they have them. So let's see how this pans out. Hopefully I don't have to make another call to them but just to clarify what the pieces are um sorry i may bungo up the names i'm not good at remembering the specific names for each part i can give you a general description of where it goes and if i find the names later uh, i will see if i can beg my husband to put it somewhere on this video i'm not a youtuber so i have no idea how that happens but what I do know is that this is uh, 
up like a nail. This particular piece here is the right hand side, uh, bottom base of the grill. It holds up those two uh, wheels that actually come with the part, which is really nice. I was not expecting that. And it seems like it goes and attaches to this top frame of the grill. And I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, this part here is the bottom shelf of the grill, which I told you was very rusted. Um, that's why I purchased a new one, uh, which attaches to these. When I first got this, I didn't realize that it was so much of a piece. I just thought it was going to be a little part. And then I realized that, yes, um, I thought I was only getting this part right here that was rusted, but I ended up getting the whole entire right side um, legs. So that's actually really good. I don't have to worry about ordering separate pieces. This is the left side, same concept. Um, and we'll see how and that attaches to the top. Let me just place this down. Oh, and the left side also comes with the casters on the left side, which is really nice as well. And then this part right here is the top. This holds the entire grill pan. I don't know what the actual name for it, but the whole grilling area goes in there. And this part right here is what uh, holds up the burner area or the burner knob. Again, it's all one piece. I was only seeking to replace this part because this part was rusted. Uh, but it's nice to know that you get the whole entire frame, but obviously that entails more work. So uh, this part is what holds the tank. And that's the rusted part, which I obviously didn't want to have that rusted. I don't want my tank slamming down. So that is the general uh, construction. I'm going to start to try to rebuild it. That means I'll, I will have to re disassemble as I stated earlier, to get some of the screws. So the first part obviously is always to remove your tank. Make sure you shut it down before you remove it. So first I'm going to remove this part. This part I'm obviously keeping and that way I'll be able to use it when I reattach it to the new uh, top frame. is a little rusted so it, it was a little bit harder to take out this piece um, this one was a little easier because it's less rusted the whole thing came out though it slid out um, this is the front cover that's attached I already washed it I will take the opportunity to clean this up a little bit and then I will proceed so the next step obviously now will be removing this panel over here my son already took off the first screw. We'll take off this screw. This panel we'll keeping. I'll have to clean that up a little bit and we'll move so we on. flipped it over uh, to be able to access it better and to replace the bottom part. I removed, I removed the door by bringing this door hinge in a little bit and pulling it out. 
and it came out a little bit out of the slots because it usually sticks out here and then connects to the grill. I'm going to remove the other door as well. So for now, I think I will be removing this screw and perhaps this screw. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to start with this one to see if the panel starts to come off. So there is another screw at the bottom here that attaches the back panel uh, to the leg bar. So I need to unscrew that so that I can loosen up the leg bars. So we flipped it over again and we will be removing these two back panel screws just to make sure uh, that they're not in the way before we flip the grill back over. So the back panel removed really easily. We just took off the back two screws and pulled the panel out. Now we will flip it over and keep working on removing those legs. So that you can see uh, the bottom part comes out. There's that silver clip there. There's another one on this side. And it was a matter of just sticking a screwdriver in there, prying it in just to unclip it a little bit. And then I gave it a gentle kick from the bottom upwards and that loosened it. I did the same thing on both sides. Um, since I am replacing this whole piece, I wasn't too concerned about giving it that gentle kick, but that kick uh, pushed it inside uh, towards the main area and released it. So next, I will be removing uh, this section right here. Let me see if I can use my screwdriver to point to it. Um, right there. This is the little uh, rail for the grease pan. There's two of them. That one as well. Sorry, my camera is readjusting. So I'm going to remove those uh, rails right now uh, because then I have to remove the left side bar and oh boy, it is really getting complicated. So I'll get to that in a second. trying to figure out how the leg is going to come off and how this side panel is going to come off. Okay, so I discovered that the way to remove this side panel here on the left side was the very technical way of giving the inside part a stiff punch out pushed it out really toughly and what happened it just slid out this way and then kind of slid out that way because as you could see um, it does not notch under the bottom but the top is just slide you want to slide out the top part and if that push isn't sufficient to knock it down with the gravity just slide it downward and it'll come off so yay um, that was much easier than I anticipated. I kind of looked at it for a while, couldn't be, didn't see any other screws that were attaching it. And so that was that. So I just noticed that the swift punch out of that side part, which by the way, that panel is labeled A. There's a sticker, sticker on it that shows the letter A. So that may help you if you're looking for the number or the letter of the panel. I noticed then that caused this frame to come out. So I'm assuming that a swift kick at the bottom part right here, like so, 
we're not that technical here. We'll pop out that bottom leg. So that was good to know. Next time I will not have my good drill underneath it. So keeping in line with that, um, since that came off easily, I'm going to want to now reassemble the new one, attach the new legs to the top frame using, to the new top frame using the old screws uh, because I don't want to lose my process. I don't want to lose any screws along the way. So since I figured out that part, I might as well assemble that part now. So now we will remove the bottom right leg panel. See, so that's the grill laying down flat on its back. And that's the bottom right leg panel. I will start removing uh, these little screws there. Sorry, I took the camera off focus. Uh, and since I am keeping this panel part, I have to be very careful not to um, lose track of how I unassemble it and to be careful when I remove it. So we unscrewed these screws from here and here, and then just push out and the whole panel comes off. Out of there. I'm sorry. The next part we unscrewed was this from here, and hopefully that should be enough. But we'll double check. So we went professional and we used a rubber mallet to remove this part from this part, just slide it out. So we are left with the top part and we've assembled the frame that we just got recently, uh, kind of using the same process uh, when we disassembled it. So now we're gonna figure out how to do the burner tubes and to put that part on top of the new part. Let's see how this works. So before we replace the top part of the grill onto the base, we're going to change the burners. I, it's dirty in there. I don't want to change the burners and have all that extra ash fall into the new cabinet. So we'll do this first, clean it up as much as we can once we remove those old burners and be before we replace the new burners. The new replacing burners, you really need to be careful and read those instructions. Um, don't try to wing that. And the instructions do come with the replacement burners. Just a brief description. I removed this control panel. First I took, popped off the knobs and then there were little screws on the other side of here and on the other side of here underneath this plastic cover that attached to this. So I took off those screws and the whole panel came out. So we'll clean this and get to that part. What I did right now, this is the igniter. It was slid in here and attached like that. I kind of just twisted it a little bit to loosen it and slid it out. Sorry I didn't show it to you earlier. I was kind of playing around. It's attached to this and the little silver, well, what used to be silver box on the other side. I have to figure out how to unattach it. I, I actually have the new uh, igniter system and I'm assuming the instructions in here will tell me how to uh, disassemble the part in there. I forgot to mention that uh, when I first took this out in order to loosen it I, there are these little clips on the side I squeezed them in before I slipped it out of this hole into the larger hole and pop it popping it out. So it attaches to what's called the gas catcher. I think you can see that part right here. Um, it used to be silver. 
This is what it looks like new, and it's pretty rusty. According to the instructions, there's a little tab here, a little sil silver tab that you straighten out. I don't know if you saw that, but just kind of pushed it down a little to release it. The sliding it. Um, I think you unclip these guys here. Kind of skip that. I'm going to check it out. How how I unclip it. You remove these wires from the igniter button. So this is the new igniter button, and those are the wires. Um, and that's what's called the gas cat catcher, which is silver. So let me now remove these guys. I'm not sure how to do it, but I'm not going to take much care because this igniter is not really working. Uh, and I just want to make sure it goes through. on this so it's taking me a little longer to pick it off and it's also very again I said I don't want to take much care I'm just assembling this so I can pull it through this hole yeah that's just really tight then you slide them out I removed a very rusty bolt that I attached from this top frame into the main box. Once I removed that bolt, which broke off, so now I have to call them, um, I was able to lift up the whole box, including the frame. Um, I'm sorry, including the burners. So now I will just remove this little metal piece from the front. I already removed one screw from here. I will remove the other screw from there. Once I remove that, then this part just pops out like push it inward and the whole thing comes off. So I turned over the main top frame. Uh, I flipped it upside down. I will be removing this part here uh, because I need this part. And that's attached by two screws. Uh, that are, can I turn this camera over? That are there. So I will remove that. I am leaving this part here last and the front part right there last because for some reason I can't see any screws that attach. So I'm assuming that clips all, off some way, but I'm getting tired. So I'll figure that out a little bit later. It's not integral to uh, putting this back together since um, that could be done those are just accessories that I think are added later so but this part I definitely need because I don't have that so I will take that off to attach it to my new frame so I turned this around again uh, standing it up this will be the f this left side here is the front of the grill That's obviously the top. This has to come off. So I was able to stick the screw in here, screwdriver in here, sorry. I'm not sure if you see it, it's getting a little darker. It's popping out. My issue is trying to figure out how to pop it out from here. The same little slot is here but it's not popping out with the same ease so it could be because it's rusted I'm not sure um, it's actually driving me crazy because I'm assuming it's a quick snap in to pop this out so that I can release this bar and release everything um, and knowing 
me, the simplest thing is going to be the hardest part. So I have to figure that out. Um, maybe I'll take a soft mallet and try to lift it up to see if it's just because it's, oh, you know, rusted in that perhaps that's why it's not coming out with ease the way this part is coming out over here. Now that this is upside or sideways on the floor, I'm going to remove the two screws, one, two, that attach the manifold to the burner tube. So these are the two screws I'm removing. They're actually somewhat loose. Uh, once I remove those, then the burner tubes uh, should be able, to, this should be able to slide out of the burner tubes. So actually these are the, the two screws that were inside the grill that attached to the nuts. I was pointing to nuts that I unscrewed and it wasn't the actual screws. You see, then you just slide it out. Now I will slide the burner tubes out it's actually quite simple uh, and make sure that you don't accidentally try to unscrew the guides for the burner tubes uh, I saw that in the instruction they just slide out and you do not need to unscrew it see one just they simply slide out as you can see this is where the hole in the original burner tube, which started this whole process, is. That is actually uh, made this crack in half. Technically, I'm supposed to be able to slide this off. This is a little rusty off that burner tube and this burner tube, thus freeing the burner tube so they can slide out of the whole box. And just to give you a general idea of what it's supposed to look like new, this is the connector piece in perfect condition, right? Uh, that's this right here. And this burner tube is this right there. And this burner tube is right here. So these burner tubes would slide in and connect. Uh, I will now fight to get this rusted tube off so I can slide them off. I just wanted to make sure you saw the whole process and why am I showing the fighting video so my son just snapped off the broken burner tube and I'm going to try to zoom out a little bit so you can see and now you just slide these guys right out uh, make sure they're in line so they can come out the hole and voila, they're completely out. It's quite interesting to see burnt, rusted burner tube versus the better part. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing in reverse to replace the burner tubes and the connector burner tube inside. I'm just gonna clean this out a little bit and do that. While I was cleaning up the grill, I, uh, removed the rails that go right there uh, it, they were attached with uh, just one screw each and I will show you later it's getting late so I just want to reassemble the burners um, and then I'll just show you how to attach them and I guess if you do the opposite that's how to um, disassemble it the rails uh, have these notches, so obviously, or not so obvious, but I was able to kind of figure out that the two openings face each other like that, and then they will look like that when you're sliding them into the position. Just note when you put that little connector tube, make sure that the little slots are facing up. What I did is I first stuck in the burner tubes through the entry point. And then uh, before I slotted them in, I assembled by adding the connector tube. And then I slid them right into the screw 
um, again, there's no tightening of the screw. You just slide it right under the screw head so that you know that's where it goes. So I'm replacing the manifold, as this is called. So you insert the manifold back into the burner tubes. I press nicely. And then making sure I'm pressing, I replace the stick the screws back in to the hole here on the right. And then I put back the nuts. Am I facing the right way? Yes. Oh, make sure that it goes in. Okay, delete that. Sorry about that. Make sure you you lift up so it goes through this bar. And then I'm going to put the nuts back in, these guys back in. So let's not forget the starter. Let me get this a little closer. See if I can. catch it. So this is the starter piece. Um, these batteries, these uh, wires go through a slot that's here. I just realized there's two slots. One for the white wire goes at the bottom. The black wire goes in the top. And the reason I know this is because, not that I remember, but also because the black wire is attached to a section that has a hole. I'm going to slide that whole thing in. Showing you the old one, this open part will be facing the front of the cookbox. So that open part is here facing the burner. And then even if you don't remember, the black will go into that and it's the only piece that I can actually go in there. So that'll be pretty easy to figure out. You insert that. And then the white will insert into the little clip. That I don't remember how it goes. I have a feeling this was upside down. Oops. Let me double check it. So then I remember, you know, bringing it over. I haven't attached the tab yet. I haven't brought it up, but I just want to make sure I'm doing this correctly. Um, and then I remember Sliding it in here. Right. I'm tired. It's been a long day. There it is. It attached. So I think now I will fold that little tab that was. I don't know if you could see it. That little tab right here. Oops, sorry. I can fold it up now and attach it to the cookbox. You just flip it up. It's a little tight. 
but just enough so it kind of holds on to the box. I didn't want to do that until I made sure I had it correctly. This, I think it's supposed to clip. I'm going to double check on this. It feels like it's a little loose, but I, that's the only direction it'll clip in. And now you get the burner top. I hold on to the, the little tab because it kind of falls in. So I'm gonna hold on to that and try to slide it in. And I think that's lined up. I want to double make, make sure again, double check. And yeah, I feel the, the give now. So that push button is there. And so if I recall correctly, these were attached with a couple of screws. Hopefully I will find them now. And we can get moving to wrapping this job up. I had to watch the video again. So the screws that uh, attached this are two screws and they attach to this panel here. Now this panel is made out of plastic, um, but boy, it was hard to take out because apparently the main frame, the reason that I replaced this top frame was because it was a bit rusted. It was very rusted and it rusted around one of these, this one, I think, because I cleaned it up a little bit. Um, so you really had to pry it off, but the way it goes, I'm going to dry it a little bit more, but I just want to show you is um, you just slide them both in like this and then give it a good whack and then you attach the screws. Um, you can also attach the front cover or you should attach the front cover beforehand. I may do that um, in a little bit, but I'm just waiting to dry these because I rinsed them off. So I'm just going to show how I attach this um, to the underside of this before I slide that in. And that's that took less than a minute took me like 15 minutes to get it off so <laughs> hopefully this will not rust to the point where that'll happen there's a little clip that goes on the other side um, I'm gonna wipe it down I haven't had a chance to do that uh, but that prevents um, I think it prevents the bar from sliding out at some point I have this all twisted here because I have to get to the underside of this and it's a pain now. Um, there's two screws that go one in here and one over here. And the only way to really reach is with a nice long, uh, but you put it from underneath actually. This is just kind of a pointer to tell you where the screw is. But you attach it from underneath uh, to the to the top frame with a um it's, oh it's not only a pointer but it's also to slot the screwdriver in so otherwise you can't get to it so i have to use a manual screwdriver okay the mosquitoes are starting to come out so 
So I'm going to wrap this up pretty quickly. Don't forget to put back your burner knobs. I'm going to clean mine, so I will put them back later. So while my son tries to attach the front silver part that we completely forgot to attach, before we um, put this grill box in, which makes made it a lot harder to stick the little front uh, silver panel on and now we're trying to like access one of the screws but mosquitoes are killing me so i will start adding the flavorizer bars um i don't even remember how they go now uh -huh. i just want to close up shop soon They look so new in comparison to the rest of the grill, but I have to say, cleaned up pretty well considering. I still have to clean uh, the the grill uh, covers. Ooh, those mosquitoes are really trying to get me. One already got me. So I want to go inside soon. Uh, I'll put the cast iron grates, which I still have to clean. I think that's what I was trying to say. Um, and then I think we'll finalize uh, this video tomorrow. We'll try to, to turn it on and see if it worked. And make sure that we don't have any extra parts that we forgot to put in. So I'm back this morning to assemble the rails or the tracks that go underneath the cook box and what they do is you put them underneath the cook box and this is to hold up the uh, grease pan so I will assemble these I'm not going to necessarily show it uh, but it comes with this and with two screws one okay one for each side. I thought they were supposed to have three, but because my old one looked like it was missing some, but the, it seems to only come with one screw to attach. So I know now why um, it only comes with one screw, uh, because in here, you put the part that has these little knobs or like i guess they're not knobs as much as they're um like a little peg that sticks out so that's why you push that well i'm putting that wrong okay it's gonna go this way and you slide it in and then in the middle is where you attach the screw. So really briefly, I will show you how to reinstall this door since I just did the right side door. Um, you take the bar that has the hi higher uh, piece that will go in the top part um, and the short piece will go at the bottom part okay so first you insert the bigger piece through this hole and that'll connect to the hole here underneath and then you'll have to align it I'm doing this standing up I don't want to 
both and then you reconnect them. Let me see if I could do that without blocking in the camera. you do the bottom part then it will not go in you have to I'm still using the rusty old bar so it took a little longer but that's it they don't seem to be that aligned but I will not go crazy over that we'll leave it the way it is the new flavor riser bars are set down um and then i will be putting the grill gates These are a little bit heavier uh, because they're the cast iron ones and then i will be testing out uh the gas once i put the gas tank back I'm not really sure, um, I may do a uh, leak check. I was technically supposed to do the leak check uh, before I put this cover on so that I could test the two connections at the top <clears throat> before um, operating the grill. But I think that's fine. I'll just test the other connections. Maybe I can test them through uh, the bottom way it's not really that covered maybe I can access them technically you're supposed to take some soap with water and apply it with a sponge or a rag and if you turn on the gas and you see bubbles form or get larger then that means that you have a leak so I'll see if I do that I may do it just to be sure I didn't really disconnect these attachments for the gas tank i did disconnect the main one but you don't know with time this has been here for quite a few years they could have loosened up or there could be a hole so i may do that okay now i'm going to test it out Ho hopefully it will ignite correctly without any issue oh what is going on that's not a good sign. Oh, it did go on. Yep. I should bring that closer so that I can... I don't know if you can see the flames, but they're on. Nice and... Oh, yeah, you can see them. Perfect. Now I will check for any leaks and then this concludes my grill experience.